Saudi A. Hall for banning half brother from a wedding. My husband, 31 male and I, 29 female, got married civilly last year and will, COVID permitting, be having our religious ceremony and reception in October of this year. All parties will be vaccinated and the wedding will be socially distanced. Don't worry. Here is the issue. My father is coming from overseas to come to my wedding and walk me down the aisle. He is insisting on bringing his son, 9 male, with him for almost two months. I have asked him not to for many reasons. For some background, my parents are still legally married but separated, and he expects to bring his son, who is not my mother's child, to stay with my mom in the house that is still in his name. Second off, this child was conceived while my father was having an affair in our home country, and nobody knew about the kid until my dad surprised us one day with a picture of him. Basically, my mom was ambushed and was expected to deal with it because she is financially dependent on my father. Now, I have met the kids and I have no problem with my half-siblings at all. They're kids for Pete's sake. I mean, I know he is my half-brother, but it's weird because he isn't really a brother to me, if that makes sense. He lives in another country and I didn't grow up with him, but I truly harbor no ill feelings for the kids. Children are innocent and should never have to bear the sins of their parents. But my mom always told my father, do whatever you want, but don't bring your crap to my door. This, in my opinion, is him bringing the crap to the door, then smearing it on the door and smashing the rest in my mom's face. Why should my mom have to deal with her husband's love child who I barely know running around at her daughter's wedding? Yes, it is me and my husband's day, but she is my mom and the spine that holds my life together. In my opinion, it's her day too, just in a different sense. I stand with my mom because my dad's being a tool. Quite frankly, in the month leading up to the wedding, I will be bloody busy with last minute stuff and have no time to entertain a kid. But I would be lying if I didn't say my number one reason is the blatant disrespect of my mother who is an awesome mom and quite possibly the best grandmother on the face of the earth. I have tried so hard to kindly explain to my father why his kids shouldn't come, and I have highlighted all the cons for my half-brother, like missing school, no kids to play with, different language and country, and my dad won't be able to properly care for him. Again, old immigrant male mentality. I love my father dearly, but he is thick-headed and wants to do whatever the hell he wants. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for giving my father the ultimatum of either come alone or don't come and mom will walk me down the aisle? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Honestly, why not have your mom walk you down the aisle to begin with? Your father isn't exactly the shining example of the sanctity of marriage. If father brings his affair child to stay in his wife's home, he should not have the honor of walking Opie down the aisle. Not the a-hole. I don't want you to bring the child born of your cheating on my mom to my wedding is a perfectly reasonable request. Not day hole. Wow. It's not just about having the kid at the wedding. For me, it's more about wanting to stay in the same house as your mom. For two months. Even if he went alone, I'm sure your mom is not exactly looking forward to sharing a house with him for that long. Put your foot down. Your mom doesn't deserve that and your dad is being totally entitled. Not day hole. This goes far beyond a Reddit thread. If you were going to ban the child, I would also ban the dad. Sounds like he made his own bed when he decided to be unfaithful. Why would you even want that kind of energy or juju in your wedding? Not to mention being walked down the aisle by a man who is as unfaithful as that. His family, but really? Now for the next story. Am I the a hole for refusing to go to my brother's wedding if my son can't go? Some backstory. My brother's 30 male, soon to be wife Tara, 26 female, went to the same high school as me. She was one grade below me, but we all knew each other. I, 27 male, have a 5 year old son with an ex girlfriend who also went to school with us. My ex and my brother's girlfriend hated each other. They were on the same drill team and, I don't know, were jealous of each other. It was some old BS petty high school rivalry. Then I guess it got bad because they were both crushing on the same guy, and he got with my ex after he rejected Tara. I got with my ex in college. It was a brief thing. We broke up right after my son Jason was born. He's with me full time and my ex is in the picture sometimes, but not that much. I found out over a year ago my brother was in a relationship with Tara, 
and now they're engaged and going to get married in November. Haven't been around Tara much because I'm busy with my own life. When invitations went out, my brother called me. He said Tara didn't like Jason being there at their wedding. They've never met before, because he's the son of my ex. She just doesn't like the idea of her sworn enemy's son being at her wedding. I didn't think he was serious, because that was all years ago, and we are, you know, adults now? My ex isn't even in our lives, so it's not like she'll be there. I kind of got mad at my brother that he'd be cool with his own nephew not being at his wedding, when all of my other siblings are bringing their kids. My brother pleaded me to go along with this, because he wants her to be happy on their special day. So I said, you know what, fine. But if my son isn't allowed at the wedding, then I won't be going either. Now my brother is the one mad at me for turning this into a big deal, because he wants his family there. But he's just caught between a rock and a hard place. My parents agree she's being ridiculous and are berating my brother. My other siblings think I should have just agreed and not turned this whole thing into a bigger drama. So I'm on the fence about how I handled things here. If it was a no kids wedding, then I'd get that. And yeah, it is their special day. But my son is the only one not allowed to be there. And I don't feel right with excluding him over something childish that was 10 years ago. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. If it was a no kids event, then I would say no biggie. But since kids are allowed, the bride is being the a-hole. It's not your son's fault that the bride has something against his mother. Good on you for standing up for your son. I know this might be a slippery slope fallacy, but if you allow it for the wedding, what else is she going to exclude your son from? Just doesn't make much sense on her end. I don't get what the big deal is either. Or why I should be hung up on something that happened when we were teenagers? Especially when my son had absolutely nothing to do with it. She wants to take her anger out on your kid, because it's the closest she'll get to get even on your ex. It's gross. Not to mention she's getting even over losing another guy, who isn't her current groom, to her enemy. And groom is okay with this? Not today, Hall. Ask him what the long-term plan is. Is he planning on cutting his nephew out of his life forever due to his fiance slash wife's childhood feud with the child's practically non-existent mother? Does this mean she will make him or expect you to miss family events, slash Christmas, slash birthdays, etc. if your child is there? Where are the boundaries that she expects to be around your son? Because, believe me, not attending the wedding is just the first step. Your brother needs to think long and hard about this situation, and what it will really mean for his future relationships with his family. This, not day hall. She is hating a child for something he has no involvement in or control over. Now my brother is the one mad at me for turning this into a big deal because he wants his family there. Reread that. He wants his family there, but he doesn't want your son there because Tara will be upset. So your son is not part of the family. Also, if you let this slide this one time, what about next time? What about all the family gatherings and holidays? What if their defenses, this is her big day, so it's only going to happen once? Can anyone absolutely guarantee that? What if Tara starts threatening your brother and say she won't go because Jason's there? What if they have kids and Tara is holding the kids back because Jason's there? Can anyone be sure that will not and will never happen? If Tara is treating a five-year-old child like that, she's not going to get better. Stand up for your child. Next story is titled... Am I the a-hole for outing my aunt about her secret first marriage that she was hiding from her kids and husband? Backstory. I-28 male was looking through some old photos at my mother's house a couple years ago and discovered a wedding picture of my aunt, 50s female, and a strange man I'd never met before, who is not the uncle I know. My mother told me about my aunt's first marriage, that she's kept hidden from the kids because she's very religious. The husband's name was Adam. Fake name, relevant for later. My cousin, 34 female, is the daughter of my aunt with a current husband. She's pregnant again, and they're picking a girl and a boy's name because they want to be surprised. My cousin wants to name the baby Adam if it's a boy. My aunt has been saying very negative things about the name, how much she hates it, and how my cousin is ruining everything by naming her first possible grandson that name. She has kept going on and on. 
My cousin and her husband really loved a name, and it would be a tribute to her husband's dad who passed on a couple years ago. My cousin and I had a playdate with our children at my mother's house, and she was talking about this whole situation. She confided in me about how upset she is with everything since she's so close to her mom, how she's fallen in love with the name, and how bewildered she is and why her mom hates the name. This is where I might be the a-hole. When she told me the name, it clicked right away and I told her it was because that was her mom's first husband's name. My cousin said her dad was her mom's only husband, and she knows this because her mom said she was a virgin when she married. I was going to leave it at that, but my cousin looked at me funny and asked why I would lie. How if someone lies about little things, then you can't really trust them. I told her I wasn't lying, and she doubled down saying I was. So I told her to wait, and I dug through my mother's photos and found a wedding picture. I showed it to my cousin and told her she should apologize because I wasn't lying. This was her first husband, and his name was Adam. She went into a tailspin of how much her mother has lied, and I told her the only liar here was her mom, not me. My cousin was not happy about that. My cousin confronted her mother, and now my aunt is furious with me and my mother for keeping the evidence. But my uncle and my cousin is furious at my aunt. Am I the a hole? I was just defending my honor, and my aunt didn't make me promise to keep her secret. Now for the top comments. So your aunt lied and upset a bunch of people who are not you, and she and all of those people are blaming you? These people are the reason you only have family reunions every 20 years. Not day home. My cousin confronted her mother, and now my aunt is furious with me and my mother for keeping the evidence. My uncle and my cousin are furious at my aunt. No one is angry at Opie except the aunt. Unless there was a line I failed to read. Everyone sucks here. You knew what you were doing. And the gleeful delivery of your mom's a liar, not me, reflects poorly on you. But open secrets like this in families are straight garbage. I grew up in a family with them and got myself into trouble a few times by not knowing who the secrets were kept from. So I'm straight up with people. I can't keep up with secrets, so if you want to keep something secret, keep me out of it. Yeah, but Opie was kept out of it. It's not like the aunt confided in Opie and then pressured him to keep it a secret. Opie stumbled across information that had nothing to do with him. Nobody knew, he knows. And he could have very easily avoided being mixed up in this. But Opie just couldn't keep the juicy gossip to himself. Because honestly, that's really what it was, wasn't it? Telling cousin didn't solve anything or help anyone. Just created a bunch of drama for aunt, uncle, and pregnant cousin who really has enough on her plate. Oof, this was a wild ride, man. Everyone sucks here. You were undoubtedly an a-hole. Not because you let it slip that your aunt is a liar, but because of this. I told her the only liar here was her mom, not me. You took it way too personal. You should have let it go at that. Your cousin probably would have come around. If not, that's her loss. You created family drama necessarily. It's none of your business if your aunt is a master liar. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to babysit my ex's kids? Some background. Ex cheated on me when our sons were 6 and 4, now 12 and 10. Left me for the other woman who got pregnant, and that baby ended up being stillborn. Things were already tense between us, but then they wanted to keep the boys for an indefinite period of time so she could grieve with them around. I said no. She told me she needed her boys around. Now, take into account that she was in their lives five-ish months at that point and was already claiming them as hers. They never got over my refusal, and the fact that when my ex had to leave for a month working after, that I wouldn't let her see the boys in that time, or the fact I didn't show concern for the two of them. Apparently, I was supposed to be unaffected by what my ex or this other woman did. Things have not changed since. We don't communicate all that much, which is how I like it. The boys have a rocky relationship with them because they tried to force them to call her mom. Anyway, they now have two other kids, and her mom died. She grew up in another country, and her family's there. They want to travel for the funeral and ask me to keep their kids because it would apparently be more complicated quarantining and stuff with children. I said no. I do not want to look after their children. I am not helping them out. They are pissed with me, saying X's family all said no too. 
They have nobody who will watch the kids, and she doesn't deserve to go through this alone. I told them I have no responsibility to help them, and no desire to have their kids in my home for two plus weeks, depending on how long it takes them to go for the funeral and make it back. Axe's wife called me an a-hole and told me I am devoid of empathy. I told her not to expect favors from the woman whose husband she had an affair with. A friend of mine suggested I should do it for the bonding time between kids. That she knows if the boys don't really like dads, they probably haven't done much bonding with their half-siblings. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Holy hell, the audacity to ask you. Absolutely not the a-hole. If my ex asked me this, I'd be laughing so hard I'd watch myself. Not to mention she at one point wanted Opie's kids to be there like emotional support animals. I understand her grief over her lost child, but she literally was what broke up their parents' relationship and has no right to ask that of them. Not stay hall, Opie. The entitlement of your ex and his wife is beyond belief. Given the history and past interactions, they are delusional to think you owe them to help them out in anything, let alone this huge imposition. The relationship between your kids and their half-siblings is your ex's responsibility, not yours in any way. You have said all the right things. Please ignore them if they try to pressure you again. Not today, Hull. I wonder if the half-siblings even have a good relationship with Opie's kids, considering what the ex and the other woman did. Not today, Hull. Not today, Hull. She said that you are an a-hole and that you are devoid of empathy? If she wants to see that person, she should go to the bathroom and look in the mirror. Their kids, their problem. Neither of them have anyone that will help them. You know why? Because nobody wants to help a bunch of a-holes. They're lucky that they found each other. I would understand a weekend, but two weeks? Just stay calm and keep your voice down when you talk to them. It's super easy to scream when you're dealing with entitled lunatics. You seem to set your boundaries clearly, and they are not unreasonable.